Okay, so uh, I'm back in the workshop. Um, yesterday, uh, I kind of started working on the X axis. Um, I had some aluminium material left uh, that I ordered for the other parts. Um, I didn't want, at the start of the project, I didn't want to order much more than I needed, um, so I was pretty reserved knowing that I would need to have a little break and uh, order new parts, uh, new materials as I go. Um, but so far I've, e I think I had uh, two 10mm plates of aluminium, uh, slightly larger off so I've, I've cut a piece out of here. That size I think that is Uh, looks like it's a six. I think it was a six by four inch. Um, just roughly checking. I don't think I had. Uh, no. So I've gone through a couple of those and also a similar size piece, um, but inch thick instead of ten mil or so. Um, yeah. So I've, I've got another block of the inch thick. Coming hopefully tomorrow, uh, but I managed to. I got the the main uh, Z axis stepper bracket, um, or the mount rather, and the the main nut down here. Um, then I also had a small piece I've used for the X axis, which I'll show in more detail in a moment, um, and the nut uh, mount for the X as well, which again I'll, I'll zoom in and I'll explain explain what I'm doing up there. Um, uh, tests on the Z axis seem to be fine. Um, it's aligned nicely so there's there's not there's no real stresses anywhere um, that I can I can see at the moment. It's it's free turning on its own with it all kind of disconnected. Uh, so I know the two two mounts are aligned. Um, that wasn't too difficult to do because everything's bolted to the the rack um, part of the bed, which is obviously milled parallel and square to the rest. So it was just a case of uh, kind of measuring and, and using that reference. Uh, so that turned out uh, quite well. So um, I'll, I'll put up a clip of um, how I bored out the the nut. Um, housing there. Uh, I, again, I set it up in the four jaw. I, I milled the the step out first, um, and then set it up in the four jaw. Um, drilled and bored that out. I didn't get any footage of it um, of machining for that bit. Uh, but I actually, for the first time, I programmed a very simple um, program which used the Z axis to travel. Um, just past an inch and then it returns to home uh, and I use that to bore the the hole for the nut here uh, I, I didn't need to but uh, I didn't want to have to take everything off uh, to put the rack on and then attach the the um, saddle uh, sorry the apron I didn't want to have to do that again because I've done it so much every time I had to change something I'd have to change it over so I kept that on, made a simple program, which was basically a slow feed in, uh, then it would return, then I would just adjust the cross side manually. Uh, obviously this was before any of this was attached. Uh, and it, yeah, it worked well. Uh, I've got a better surface finish than by doing it by hand, obviously without having a lead screw. I got rid of the lead screw uh, before the project started, so it was nice to have a, a nice constant feed for that. So I'll uh, bring you into the x-axis and I'll show you what I've done yesterday. So this is um, how far I've got with the x-axis. Um, that was pretty much what I was doing yesterday. Uh, pretty simple. Um, part of the, the entire project, one of the key points was I, I didn't want to do anything to the lathe that wasn't reversible. 
um, for the most part so I didn't want to drill any holes into the original um, castings and parts of the lathe which is why I used the rack um, tapped holes for the other parts for the z-axis and also when attaching the nut you can see I used the two um, mounting points which were originally for the apron so it was that's why it, it's not as tidy as it as it might be if I was just simply drilling holes into the side of the lathe um, so I've kind of had to work out the problems as I go um, but you can see this end here I've basically there's a plate in which the bearing block uh, attaches to that is then bolted into this connecting piece here uh, which is bolted into the z-axis um, nut housing ball screw nut housing uh, that's a very rigid setup I did it as a test because I wasn't sure how strong it would be um, as I've mentioned on the z-axis there's there's not a lot of force at all um, on the ball screw parts um, in side to side movement, twisting movements and all that kind of thing because it's, a, it's aligned well um, and the nature of the ball screws are that there's there's not a lot of tension and force on the the screw itself and therefore the other parts uh, so I think that's going to be fine um, again this would have been easy if I would just drill straight into the the saddle but uh, I didn't want to, to do that so that was a pretty simple um, piece to mill obviously milled square and parallel uh, drilled through holes for um, quarter BSF uh, bolts um, there's a mix of metric and uh, imperial um, I had to use 2BA on the, the rack for the z-axis uh, for those mounting brackets and then these are M5 which hold the nut um, M6 which hold the bearing blocks and then as I said there's a few uh, quarter BSF um, which I also used to attach the um, behind the stepper uh, bracket as well for the z-axis as the casting for the bed um, that's where the original lead screw bracket would have been with quarter BSF uh, bolts the nut here um, it's semi temporary although it will be in this arrangement but attached slightly differently in the future to the, the cross slide obviously the screw part and the handle here won't be present when it's all finished that's just there at the moment because I'm still uh, taking parts on and off so the the nut housing here is held down by two quarter BSF bolts they're actually using the two small nuts which originally would have been either side of the um, compound slide to allow for rotating adjustment so I've just used those and it's clamping this block down onto the cross slide again uh, without any of this assembly I checked and it, it moves freely um, I don't think there will be any problem with that um, for now um, I have ordered the parts as I mentioned or the materials for the rear assembly uh, I had to think about this a little more as it was a, as a bit more complicated um, there's, n there's not a lot on the back to be able to attach parts to um, but I'll explain that in the next update um, after I've, I've machined the parts for that so it's fairly simple um, you can probably tell the obvious reason why the ball screw is on the right hand side uh, and that is it's quite a large ball screw it would not fit in the housing of the cross slide where the original lead screw is I didn't want to use the original lead screw um, I know on a lot of other conversions um, both lead screws are left original um, with trapezoidal threads and that can work well uh, you can program most softwares to take into account backlash um, I just wanted ball screws I wanted as little backlash as possible 
and also um, less stress on the parts as opposed to um, like an Acme trapezoidal thread uh, which there's a fair amount of force between the nut and the screw whereas these uh, there's very little um, and they move very nicely uh, so the, the the problem solving point there was to mount the assembly to the right of the cross slide so it's not in the way obviously of the working area and uh, it should work fine the stepper will be at the back here similar to the z-axis there will be a, a mounting block and some other parts the last little part for the update today is uh, just to mention about another aspect which is a spindle encoder which I'm adding to the, the uh, system um, and that's what I've got here uh, these are quite um, common on CNC conversions um, it's, it's not an expensive item and it uh, allows me to do a lot more with the, the lathe once it's all set up uh, basically I'm planning to mount it about here, it, it almost fits perfectly um, I'll make a bracket, probably front mounting as there's some holes there, and then attached and there will be a toothed pulley on the spindle on this area here, where originally there would have been a gear and then obviously on the, the end of the encoder here um, they're reasonably large pulleys uh, because there's, I think it's about 25 and a half mil uh, spindle, obviously it's an imperial uh, so it's not exact but I tend to think in metric and work in imperial which is an odd, odd way of doing it so they're, they're quite large um, from memory I think it's 36 teeth um, 9mm wide belt capacity so I've ordered two of those and a belt which hopefully I've measured correctly and ordered the right length to to get the right distance there so that will be spinning every time the spin was on which allows the Centroid ACOM software uh, CNC12 to know exactly where the spindle is at any one time that allows for constant surface speed um, which will be uh, perfect for all kinds of diameter work and all kinds of odd shapes where you want to get a consistent finish throughout the piece and also for threading it will allow repeatable threads so uh, essentially if you cut a thread uh, you could spin the spindle by hand run the same operation again uh, and it would line up perfectly uh, there wouldn't be any clashing uh, so it's a, a simple thing to add but it, it works well, it should work extremely well. It also allows for rigid tapping as well, um, which would be a nice option for smaller internal threads on parts. So that's that's pretty much it for the update. Um, it's probably already long enough as it is. I'm trying to keep the updates below eight or nine minutes. Um, but if you if you have any other questions, uh, leave them in the comments below, and I'll uh, address them in another video or uh, I'll reply in a comment depending on how complex or easy it is to explain via the video. So uh, I'll see you next time when we hopefully get the x-axis up and running. Thanks for watching.